Hello, uh, today I will be going through a um, small demo, uh, small lecture and demo uh, on the new UCAS uh, ASH 3 demo capabilities. Okay, so I won't, I'm going to try to make this short, so um, let's continue on. The objective today is just to give you a kind of salty oats, so to speak, um, on the new VDI uh, stuff that we're doing with the new UCAS demo. Um, the objective definitely is not to give you a comprehensive review of all the demo capabilities or anything like that. This is more of an overview of the demo for the technical team uh, that has been working on the ASH3 UCAS global demo. Uh, we've been talking a lot about how we're going to give the capabilities to ETCs and SAs, how they're going to demo, how to best equip them and tool them so they're able to um, uh, not only um, grasp the user experience themselves, uh, but to be able to talk about it in depth and also be able to demo it real time um, and uh, leave a lot of that up to the ETCs and SAs. If you give them the complete tool set, they'll be come up with, we believe, uh, all kind of demos that we couldn't even think about. So uh, let's see how we're going to do that. Uh, the table of contents real quick. We're going to look at the overall architecture uh, of this new ASH3 uh, UCAS demo. Uh, we're going to talk about how PIP plays into that. We're going to talk about how the ETCs and SAs that are on the ASH2 cluster today, the UCAS cluster, in other words, if you have a phone or you have Jabber or something like that, chances are that you are in the what we call the ASH2 UCAS cluster. Okay, that's connected to our internal network. It also has Expressway on it. Um, and when we built it and how we built it has a lot of shortcomings. Uh, and we're going to try to address those with this next version of this ash 3 and um, add some demo capabilities uh, to it we're going to talk a little bit about vdi desktops okay virtual desktop infrastructure uh, that's the technology we're going to use to be able to give the sas and the etcs and really virtually anybody the product managers to be able to use this technology um, to its full capabilities for demo purposes and to experience it firsthand uh, and to play with it um, and to look at some differences between let's say Skype for business and um, uh, Jabber for Windows and things like that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, each component of the Microsoft VDI. We chose Microsoft VDI because we have a relationship with Microsoft and um, that was really our only um, avenue for, for now. This may change in the future, but uh, this is what we're going to deploy now. Uh, the different components uh, are going to be RD Web Access we'll talk about, um, connection brokers, RD Virtualization Hosts, in along with RD, RD Virtualization Hosts. We'll talk about uh, session hosts as well and SQL nodes and sessions pooled in private style of VDI. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to put this over here. Let's get a drawing. A drawing is always good. This is the overall, overall architecture of what we're building. It's a thousand foot view of what we're building. I'll go over it very quickly. Here's UCAS right here. Here's a UCAS cluster inside US. Now, of course, this could be geo, but um, we're just bundling them all in, into one here. This is US cluster. There's going to be 2,100 um, users in the US cluster. Here's the EU cluster, and here's the a a Asia Pac cluster. Okay, of course, each of these clusters will be serving their um, uh, local regions. <clears throat> this cluster will be connected to the internet um, via Expressway. Okay, so that's how uh, all the ETCs and SAs that get accounts that are going to actually use this, uh, they're going to be connected. They're going to connect with their Jabber over here, just like they do today in ASH2, but 
Today they go internally. So somehow, you know, if they're in uh, on the Verizon IDN, they're going to go outside the Verizon IDN through the internet and then connect up to these because these clusters will not be connected to Verizon's internal data network, the network that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. It will be connected to the internet. Now, <clears throat> the um, obviously UCAS connects to PIP, uh, so there will be a PIP network. This will be a, let's call it a fictitious customer's PIP network. Uh, again, um, people that are using this ETC's essays that are going to get their DNs transferred over from ASH2 to ASH3 um, are not going to be connected to the PIP network. They'll be connected through the Internet, through Expressway. Okay, that's how things will work. This, however, PIP network will be connected to, let's say, a fictitious enterprise. Um, and this fictitious enterprise will contain all the components that a typical customer enterprise um, has. Um, for example, an LDAP directory, Active Directory, Exchange clusters, GHCP servers, um, Certificate Authority servers, Internal DNS servers, Skype for Business servers, and all the ancillary applications that go along with Skype for Business, like Edge servers, front end servers, media servers, conferencing servers, things like that. So these things, along with Exchange, Exchange will have Exchange Anywhere servers that are connected in the DMZ, you know, things like that. So all this is what an enterprise typically has today um, on back offices. Not everything, but, you know, some, some core functionality that we can plug in, and you'll see why we're doing that here in a second. <clears throat> so that's the overall architecture, and... Um, we have a group by the name of, of Verizon ISD that's going to be monitoring um, the Microsoft. So this is all Microsoft stuff. So very quickly, let me talk about the um, VDI stuff. So you see this Microsoft Remote Desktop Service. This is a, um, you know, several servers, not just one server. But this server will then have, let's call them virtual desktops, virtual machines, um, virtual instances, whatever you, whatever you want to call them, of desktops, of Windows desktops. Um, those Windows desktops will have Office on them, which has Outlook, um, which also has Skype for Business Client, uh, which uh, these desktops will also have a Jabber for Windows uh, client. So you have a... Um, bundle, let's say, of desktops that are out here on the enterprise um, ready for use. Uh, by who? By any demo users. Uh, for example, if a ETC, a product manager, an SA, wants to get the full experience of this, uh, an enterprise user using UCAS, they could log into one of these demo virtual desktops and they would have uh, Jabber for Windows. They'd be able to demo that. They'd be able to demo uh, the Jabber for Windows and Outlook, Outlook integration, which we'll see. Uh, they'll be able to demo Skype for Business. Maybe they want to compare and contrast. Uh, what is it like on the user experience for Skype for Business? What's it like on Jabber? What are the pros and cons of each? Um, and um, uh, you know, how do you do a conference call in, ja in Skype for Business? How do you do a conference call in Jabber for Windows? <coughs> how do you share your screen in both? What is, what is the uh, meeting experience like in both? So all those things plus, you know, a thousand other uh, things that um, ETCs and SAs hopefully will think of to be able to demonstrate and experience for themselves and um, have that tool set to um, demo to, to customers um, on the end user experience. So let's continue on and dive a little bit deeper on the um, VDI stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So is there anything else 
here one other thing I want to point out here is the uh, let me get this exactly where I want it here okay uh, um, you see this virtual desktop right here that virtual desktop is nothing more than anybody on the internet typically going to be an SA or a ETC from their work laptop is going to be able to go to a web portal from that web portal they'll be able to grab one of these virtual desktops and bring it to their screen remember that virtual desktop here will have uh, Jabber it will have Outlook um, and it will have uh, Skype as well so they'll be able to bring and it it has the the main thing about this the, these guys here these virtual desktops are they are domain joined into this enterprise okay um, domain join meaning they're going to be part of this enterprise um, that has significance on integration and how we show integration and the user experience with let's say Jabber and unified messaging or Jabber and presence inside Outlook you know things like that so those are the things that are going to bring to the user out here the demo user or the product manager that wants to know a little bit more about their product or the um, SA that needs to understand the nuances uh, between Jabber for Windows and Skype for Business or some more details on Jabber for Windows and how that works with CMR um, things like that okay so let's clear that off let's go a little bit deeper and again you know we're going from a thousand foot view to um, uh, you know let's say 700 foot view here so here we have um, move this here here we have a little bit deeper on the uh, VDI infrastructure so uh, the RD web access component right here if you see that server there it's actually a few servers but it sits in a DMZ and it's firewalled off so that should tell you something or some kind of we're trying to protect that thing and if an SA let's say this is an SA or ETC he's on his desktop over here and he's going to go to this web portal HTTPS blah 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 it's going to hit this web portal that web portal that's using PKI so we're using encryption your typical encryption the same encryption you use when you do your uh, online banking so uh, he connects here there is a web portal that web portal will them allow him to log in and then from that login he'll be able to connect up through to a Windows machine that is part of the fictitious customer enterprise that has Outlook has Jabber has Skype for business and things like that so that desktop then it's a remote desktop session would be um, sent to the SA's PC so he'll have a view of an enterprise join desktop that brings a lot of functionality as I said before okay let's clear that real quick and then we have some other components over here not so important for this chat but we have some you know SQL servers over here SQL cluster that is keeping con uh, configuration options uh, configuration databases and things like that for all this stuff and then um, uh, connection brokers that kind of broker the connection um, 
between uh, virtualization hosts. And then we have uh, what we call collections here. So these are collections of hosts. Now, um, there's several ways to do this, and let's just talk about those real quick. If you read anything about Microsoft VDI, you will uh, start to wonder how we're going to do this. So there's three types of Microsoft VDI. There's called session-based, pool-based, and private-based. Without getting into too much detail, um, let's start at the bottom. Private base is probably the easiest one you can get around, get your head around, if you don't know anything about VDI or, or uh, haven't read much about it. Private is a style of VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure, where there is one desktop per user. So you see there's three desktops here. So each one of those desktops would then belong to, let's say, user 1, user 2, and user 3. Each of those desktops then, when anyone, let's say any TC out here, is given the account user 1, uh, whenever he connects up to this enterprise desktop, he'll always be given this same desktop. <coughs> okay, so he can, he has a lot of functionality as far as customization, backgrounds, um, you know, you know things, things like that, um, and most. That's if you read anything about this. This is the most um, available or the the best for particular software. I'll leave it at that, and you'll see why in a second. So, what's the other style? The other style is let me get a little bit of this out of here. Um, the other style is pooled. Okay, so let's erase this here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Pooled is a concept where you have a a bank of 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 PCs, virtual machines. These virtual machines are in a pool, and then anyone can use any particular virtual machine. <coughs> so my um my demonstration before where I had the ETC logging in from out here. Remember the ETC is out here. Sorry, little trouble, technical difficulty here. Right. There we go. ETC is out here. He remotes in. We have a pool. Let's call it pool one. And uh, when he comes in through here to connect up to one of these virtual hosts, one of these is going to be given to him. We don't know which one. Uh, maybe there's two already taken by somebody else. But uh, one of these is going to be given to him if there's only three there. If all these three are taken up, then he'll connect up to one of these. So it's just a again a bank a pool of virtual machines and that he can use <clears throat> so those two concepts we talked about private and we talked about pooled the two are a little bit higher maintenance higher management cost uh, higher touch right because you have in both scenarios you have a bunch of virtual machines and what happens when you have a bunch of virtual machines well you have Remember, we use Jabber, we have Outlook, um, we may um, put productivity tools, you know, things like that. Those are individual PCs. Individual PCs need individual installations. Now, there's things like, you know, uh, templates and doing sysprep against templates and deploying Windows machines and things like that, um, which you can kind of expedite this uh, type of scenario. But... Needless to say, each of those virtual machines need all these applications on them. Okay, let's talk about the third way. And this is a way that I'm excited about because I've been testing this and it's working out good so far. So all the testing that I've done so far is, um, is definitely positive. Uh, let me get this off the screen there. Okay. 
Discard that. Let's go back to here. Alrighty. So, what is session based? This is what I've been testing again. Now we take these virtual instances and they're not really virtual instances what they're what they are is on the fly creations of copies of the main server let's call it the main pc something like that that makes better sense so this main guy right here let's say we install jabber for windows skype for business outlook you know things like that that we need on a desktop on an enterprise desktop and as an ETC SA product manager, anyone really trying to um, demo or learn about UCAS can come through here. Again, same web portal. And then what we would do is on the fly, one of these would be created. And it's nothing more than a copy that of, of this guy here. So again, let me clear that up. When someone would come in um, to this machine, now there's some things that go on in the background, the broker and the uh, virtualization hosts, <coughs> collections and, and things like that. But basically, in a nutshell, uh, this guy says, hey, somebody, you know, a product manager wants to demo, do a demo, needs a virtual desktop with all these applications on it. I'm going to create a copy of this guy here's my copy and let me connect you to this copy what does that copy have remember that copy has jabber it has skype for business it has outlook okay these are things that we uh, want to um, demo it has productivity tools for WebEx. Okay, uh, sorry for my bad writing there. I'm writing on a tablet that doesn't work too well. <laughs> but um, so that's what you have. And just think about what I said a second ago having a pool of PCs or private PCs, you have to install these applications on all of them. Now, with this scenario, let's clear this up. Now, if let's say this main template pc whatever has let's say jabber and i'm going to indicate jabber as jb how's that 11 on it um, and we have a show coming up we want to show the new capabilities of jabber uh, 12 or something like that well all we need to do is upgrade uh, one particular host and we're going to upgrade him to Jabber 12. Now, anytime anybody out here, right, on Internet land, connects up and this session is duplicated, we have Jabber 12. Same goes for Office or whatever. So now we've kind of narrowed down our management of this environment um, uh, to one box, so to speak. There's a little more to it than that, but you can see where uh, this would greatly help our uh, nimbleness as far as um, giving people the tools to be able to demo the latest and greatest. Um, and there's nothing saying that we can't have, you know, one box, you know, one set of boxes that has Jabber um, 12 on it. And then one set of boxes with Jabber, you know, 10 and Outlook 2010. And this one has Outlook 2012. So we can do that as well. So again, these would just be really copies of one and much more manageable, you know, two instances of a, a, a virtual desktop that's going to be copied on the fly is better than a pooled or private, um, which we have many instances of desktops where we have to uh, manage. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, let's take a quick peek on what this demo is going to look like. So let me sign out here. 
This is the RD Web Gateway. So this would be in a DMZ available to uh, anybody with internet access. Okay, now this is all customizable. Uh, this is what we get out of the box. So um, rest assured, we could make it a lot easier. Uh, drop down boxes for users and things like that. But um, um, this page and the next page is customizable. It is SSL, so it's using the same technology. You know, it's using PKI technology, so it's encrypted um, communications all the way through from the internet to the RD web host. Okay, so I'm going to sign in as Jack Sparrow. Okay, pay no attention to this. This is kind of a different technology I've been playing around with. But um, we're going to go to connect up to remote PC. And again, this is going to be automated. This is what you get out of the box. We can Verizonize, Verizonize this. We can uh, automatically uh, make it go to connect to a remote PC. We can have uh, drop downs in here to what to connect to or auto populate it, which it probably would probably do. Uh, I'm going to populate it with my server DNS name. And again, these options um, uh, again are can be automated. Everything's available to look at, you know, out just right outside the box. I haven't customized this web portal at all, at all and this web portal is very customizable, very easily. Uh, it doesn't take any programming skills or, or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to connect up using 1024 by 768 because I want to show several desktops. Now, when I connect here, what I'm doing is connecting to a session host. So, um, you would think that it's... Oh, uh, let's see, did I do something wrong here? MS RDS1. Uh, okay, sometimes I forget the names of things. And... And I'm going to log in here. Again, this particular dialog box, I don't know if we can if we can automate. So I'm still checking into that. So I'm going to log in. And um, so what's happened? Uh, let's pull up the drawing. I had closed that earlier. So uh, the magic of pausing... All right, here we go. <clears throat> so what's happened here is, um, let's go to VDI here and right here. All we did is we came in through the internet, hit the RD web access, that's the web portal, and this is all SSL, and then um, uh, also went through, maybe I should uh, connect up this to that. All right, that's how it would be. Sorry about that. And come up and then, uh, this RD host created uh, a copy of itself. Okay, not a real virtual machine. It's kind of a copy within this RD session host um, in, within its collection in Microsoft Speak. So I can, uh, we can see Jabber came up right away. You know, it knows I'm Jack Sparrow. So let's do another one. I'm going to connect up again. I'm going to use a different account, so let's do uh, eSwan and Verizon is my password there. Okay, now what do I have? I have two desktops right in front of me that I can use. And again, just to be clear, what's happened in the background is we just created two sessions. These aren't two PCs, two sessions. So again, all we did here is uh, create sessions, two of them. One of them is logged in as Jack Sparrow, and one lo logged in as uh, Elizabeth Swan. Okay? Uh, again, we're still using 
one computer, one PC. That's all we're using. Um, now it seems a little funky, uh, but uh, we are really using the same PC on both of these. They're not two different computers. It's actually one computer and it's punching out a profile for me. It punched out a profile for uh, Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth Swan. This is very similar. Uh, I shouldn't say similar. It's kind of if you had you can think of it as the same thing as if you guys have home computers and you have Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. You can create several profiles, maybe one for your kids and then one for mom and then one for you and then each of you have different applications you know people used to use that a little bit more uh, not so much anymore but uh, it's kinda similar to that um, anyway so we have two desktops now and you see we got two uh, jabbers up Elizabeth Swan now I can conduct my demo if I want to see both sides of a user let's say Jack wants to communicate with um, Elizabeth, I can see what that looks like. It looks like I get a balloon here, so I know what that looks like on both sides. I can respond back. I can do things like, um, I want to see what it looks like from the, the uh, presenter and the receiver when I share my screen. So let me share a screen. I see I get this red box indicating this is shared over here on Elizabeth Swans, I, I get a desktop share invitation from Jack Sparrow. I can accept that. And you can see that I see, or uh, Elizabeth sees, Jack's um, uh, desktop. And then she has some buttons over here to request control. So you can see what that looks like. We requested control, and then I can accept here, or what have you. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Now, maybe I want to see what it looks like from both uh, users if I... I, if I go right into a meet now and use my WebEx capabilities and uh, my uh, cloud connected audio capabilities and then all those things inside WebEx of course you can demo as well right in front uh, of a customer and, and look at both the presenter and the um, guest and what that looks like okay so Jack Sparrow sent a request to join a WebEx meeting. Um, you can see the presence indicators. Obviously, you can highlight that as well. You can see the present indicators went to in a meeting here. And uh, now again, I can um, make up any sorts of demo. Of course, WebEx, you can spend all day demoing WebEx and, and, and what um, things are inside WebEx as opposed to uh, like link meetings and things like that. But uh, those are kind of the things you can do. Again, I'm, I'm not going to give a, a complete comprehensive demo here, uh, but I'm just kind of giving you a little bit to, to think about uh, to see what things are available in this environment, where things are going to be available. Now, what are things, you know, okay, if I had two people in the room from Verizon and we were, had both you guys, maybe we could demo some of this stuff. But uh, what about exchange? What about... Outlook integration, that's something we can't do and we still won't be able to do even in the new environment, but in this virtual environment in the new Ash 3 cluster, we'll be able to demo those things. For example, let me bring Outlook up in both of these. And uh, let's see, um, I can see, uh, this is Elizabeth Swan over here, and I, if I can go to Jack Sparrow, right from within Jack Sparrow, if he, he sent me a, a message to call him, I can see his presence right inside of Outlook. And then I can see different modalities that I can uh, contact him with. Maybe I want to send him an IM. Maybe I want to call him so I can click the call right from there. All right, and you can see video working as well. Um, so, uh, or I can do other things. I hover, hover over him and maybe send a message. Uh, start a video. Uh, chat. I can bring that up and, and start doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what else? What else is available? And, and, and there's lots there's lots to that statement, but again, uh, this is quick and dirty. And um, uh, let me just show you one other thing. The integration with Exchange. Remember, in our environment, in Ash 2 environment, we're not integrated with our work email. 
uh, and and again, as I said, uh, in this new environment, your accounts won't be integrated with your with a, a Verizon IT Exchange environment, but this virtual environment will be. So what's available there? Again, uh, presence and how about saving chats to the Exchange, um, uh, your inbox, your Exchange inbox. So you can see if I uh, chat with somebody here, uh, all these chats, you know, as soon as I close that, what they do, what, what, what happens in the background is these things get um, written to Exchange. Okay, again, I have all my um, uh, presence indicators, and I have a searchable um, folder with all the chats that I've ever had. And these can be then again uh, archived, uh, saved. You can put them in local folders. You can move them around, uh, but they're searchable. This could be for compliance, uh, regulatory requirements for compliance and things like that. So um, these are the things that you can do. Now, let's take it just a little bit further before I uh, end this demo. Um, again, uh, this demo, there's so many features uh, integrated with Exchange and, and so many features in Jabber where you can play around and kind of learn this thing. That the, the possibilities for demoing are endless. And remember, the speed to upgrade. Remember, we're dealing with one environment. We're dealing with one PC here, really. Uh, so when we do an upgrade, it's, it's going to be all the demo users are going to upgrade all at once. There's not going to be any uh, lag time when we want to show something new or something like that as far as uh, user experience. So let's do, uh, let's go a little further here. Let's log in as another person. So again, we're going to connect. Uh, we'll say OK here and I'm going to do another person. Let's say I'm going to go in as uh, Caden Garcia here. Now, these are demo users that will be available to you, um, and some of them maybe won't be uh, Jabber users. Uh, this environment will both have Link, uh, Skype for Business, uh, and 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 Jabber. So now we can we can really start giving some some nice demos and learning and educating ourselves as far as the nuances and differences between two different um, vendor uh, and their user experiences. So on the left, I got link and I can very easily start. Uh, I have to log in again. Let me, let me log in as someone else here. So again, you can do the exact same thing. Um, just use another user that you'll be provided that has link. Let's log in as Trinity Garcia. Horizon. Now let me put that away. Let's put these two desktops away here. And let's just... So we have two links now. Now I can compare and contrast. Or maybe I don't want to look at that one. Maybe I want to look at, uh, maybe I want to look at them like this. And uh, see what are the differences here um, when I double click and and how this environment what's the user experience here versus over here and it will also federate these two so you'll be able to see federation here like you'll be able to see Elizabeth Swan here something I haven't done yet but uh, that's that's easy enough to do and, and we'll get that going as well um, but anyway then you can look at these things back to back okay if I if I call what does that look like um, and uh, uh, if I do a conference call, oops, oh, I don't have an audio device here. So Microsoft isn't as tolerant uh, when you don't have audio devices. So this thing doesn't have an audio device uh, set up right now, but uh, that's something that will get passed later on. But uh, again, you can compare and contrast features, functionality, and user experience. Again, even uh, Outlook experience, you know, hovering over. Oh, I had not set up Outlook here. Let me do that real quick. Okay. Okay, and let me just bring this up over here so you can see, you know, on this side I have conversation history, and this is where 
conversations get um, stored same as in uh, Jabber over here. Remember, we have this Cisco Jabber chats. So Microsoft calls it conversation history. Again, integration to exchange. And then um, Cisco calls it your folder, Cisco Jabber chats. So hopefully this has been um, helpful to you. And uh, thanks for bearing with me here and getting through this uh, presentation and demo.